All right, what's going on, YouTube fam? Mike here, shooting another high adventure video. We're here at our bait shop, Lake World, as always. Let's go start off with a little herring. How are you doing, Ethan? Good, man. Um, I need two dozen frozen herring, frozen? two dozen live. Yes. Okay. Now we do have frozen. Do you use them tonight? Yeesh. Okay, now I can put them in a the bag and let them die just using the scuff bait. Yeah. That way they're fresh. Oh, yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> yep, I was just going to do a little chumming while I'm out there. Ah. So, all right. There's two in the bag. You say you want two dozen in there? Yeah, that would be great. Do you have to remind me your name again, man? Hey. Hampton? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, okay, I got, it took me about five times to remember Ethan. It took me three or four times to remember Richard. So Hampton, yeah, bro, yeah. I'll remember that. All right, guys, we got some in there. That's for chumming. These are blue herring, right? Yes, sir. That's great. All right, guys, we got our two dozen alive and two dozen that are, well, they're not alive. We'll put it that way. Drop those in there, get some ice on them. I've got these a little more secured than last time. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you remember the uh, mishap that we had with the bucket last time. So we're gonna try to avoid that this time with uh, the kayak. And if I can get that put down, yeah. the kayak and the cooler in the back. There we go, all right, let's roll. All right, guys, down here on the lake. It's about, I don't know, like 8.20, 8.30 in the evening. It's just beautiful. Little overcast. Gonna be some rain moving in tomorrow. I think I might see some rain out there. I'll keep an eye on that, but just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So here's my boat. For those of you who don't know, we've got the Hobie Mirage Outback, the 2020 version. We've got a couple of big floodlights. Obviously, we've got the like, this is a special light and flag that like you have to have in order to be like in regulation or whatever with the state. But then we've got a couple of these big flood lamps. Got our depth finder here in the front hummingbird the helix 5 for those of you who want to know i always have a few people ask now let's check our bait here oh wait we got one little floater but he's still kicking wow that's amazing usually when i get here there are like at least five or six dead but i took johnny's advice the subscriber i took out fishing and got a double bubble system for this and uh, it's been like an hour and a half since i bought these and everybody's still alive that is great plus we have our chumming bait on ice there there we go all right let's get started all right let's make sure the plug's in yeah it's in <laughs> it's always good to check at this park they've actually built this pretty sweet little uh spot just for kayakers that you can launch as you guys can see it's pretty awesome it's away from the regular boat ramp here we go Drop the rudder. All right, guys. Let's go. Okay, so get a load of this, guys, right here. Check out that graph. See all that right there? That's a bunch of bait fish. Looks like we got a bigger fish right in the middle of them at about 19 feet. Look at that. That's all at about 20, 25 feet of water. That's what I'm going to be looking for tonight. Water temperatures about 79, 80 degrees. It's actually dropped a little bit since I was here last, which is good. Should keep those stripers closer to the surface. Man, I'm excited. I am excited. All right, so the rules on this lake have actually changed some now. We're into June, and now on this particular lake, you have to keep the first five striper that you catch. And once you catch five striper, you have to be done fishing. It doesn't matter what size, you have to be done. Previously, before June, you could keep striper, but they had to be over 21 inches long. 21 inches or longer, I should say. Um, but now, it's any size, but after five, we're done. So, I really don't know how it's gonna work out today. I mean, we could come out here and catch five fish in like an hour, and then be done fishing. It might take three or four hours to catch the fish. Really depends on if they're biting a lot. I'm scanning the horizon here, and I'm seeing a lot of herring hitting the surface. So the herring are out, the bait's out, hopefully the big fish are in. One of the reasons I'm fishing this location at the dam is that it's a lot deeper here. And so usually deeper areas, bigger fish. So I don't want to catch five fish. And then it's like, yeah, I string up like five fish and they're all, you know, 10, 13, 14 inches long. So far, like nine out of 10 fish that I've caught here at the dam have all been like 18 plus inches. So three plus pounds pretty much. So 
that's what we're going for. And hopefully, uh, we can just get a, a good a good five fish stringer of really solid fish, hopefully tonight. So a couple hundred yards that way, there are pilings. Looks like the end one's open. There's a boat here, a couple boats over here. We're gonna go ahead and get our uh, floodlight turned on here. That way, uh, we can make our presence a little bit more known. Drop it down a little bit. There we go. Can't miss me now. So as I get a little bit closer, now that we're coming around the bend, it looks like there is another boat pulled up along the side over there. So we're gonna have to wait it out a little bit. You know what we might do is start with a little drifting. Drift with a little live bait and see if we can get a couple of these boats to leave as it gets a little later. And uh, and then we'll we'll pull up on the, on the pilings over there because that's where I really want to fish. All right, we are going to grab us a live one. Wow, they're still all down there kicking. I can feel them. Come here, you. I just tossed the first one overboard. I kid you not. There he goes. Well, maybe that's good luck. I don't know. Or it's just me being a goober. I'll let you guys decide. Here we go. I swear I always lose like a couple of these every trip. There we go. Just like that. Look at that. See that action right there? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I'm thinking those fish are going to find that hard to resist. We've got a rod holder right here. We're in about 30 feet of water. That's solid. And I just measure it about by height. So there's six, there's 12. I'm gonna drop that in our rod holder. Keep the light on him. See what happens there. Okay, it's great to bite right here. Bite right here, bite right here. I'm just sitting here eating snacks. Come on, eat it. Got him. We got him. All right, guys, first fish of the night. Here we go. Nice, guys, look at that. There's a striper. He ain't massive. Oh, but it's a good fight. And it's not small either, though. Look at that. There we go. <laughs> that was awesome, guys, on the live one. All right, there we go. Got to put them on the stringer. That's probably about 14 inches or so. 14, 14 and a half inches. Not huge, but we'll get some fillets off of that for sure. All right, guys, it's about 11.30 at night. No other fish. I have devoured about half this pack of uh, bold checks mix though. I've been about the only thing biting. I think I've counted three of the five boats over here at the pilings have left. So I think we're going to move over there now and uh, see if we can't put in some work over there. So check that out right there. Look, about 40 feet. Got a lot of something there, but check it. 177 feet of water now. But those fish are, looks like there's a little streak there at about, like I said, 40 feet or so. And that's a ton of bait fish down there. So we're in the right spot. Let's just see if we can start getting them to bite here. All right, it is time to go ahead and switch up to cut bait. Haven't had anything over here at the pillars for about the first 15 minutes, which kind of surprises me. Not even like any bites. So we're gonna go ahead and throw this on right here. Check that out. Half a herring, just like that. Right through the eyeballs. Drop that down to about 40 feet. Let's see what, what's good. Let's see what's popping down there. As they say, as the kids say, I don't know if even the kids say that anymore. <laughs> look, okay, look at this. Look, this is nuts. I mean, look at that. Look at that screen. Is that not just crazy? I mean, look at all that. That is insanity. We gotta start getting in on some fish here. Look at that. We're right at the pillar, right where we wanna be. You got that light beating down right on the water. That's what's bringing all the bait fish in. It's time to start getting some fish here. Time to see if we can get a bit of a feeding frenzy going. Got our first bit of herring here. We're gonna just start cutting it up. Look at that, just tossing it all out here. That is the, that's what we're after right there. Just spread it all out right out here, right where my fishing rods are. Oh guys, okay, just got a bite on this one. We just got a bite on this one. 
I mean, this is right where I've been throwing all this chum. Uh, we just, it hasn't been five minutes. Just got a bite. Come on. Oh, there it is. There it is. Come on. There it is. There it is. Okay, there we go. Come on. There's a good bite right there. Man, we gotta get him. Come on. Come on. I mean, this is right. There he is. Got him. We got him. Oh, no, he got off. Dang it. Oh, we had him, guys. We had him. This is right where I've been chumming. Oh, right where I've been chumming. Still got a bit of tail on there. We'll drop it back down. Dang it. Dang it, we had him. Come on. Let's stay right in here. Guys, we hooked one. We hooked one. Look at that. Look at that. Whoa, look at that. He just absolutely just loaded on. Whoa, holy cow. I was trying to change the batteries in uh, my light in the front, and it just all of a sudden my rod just went boom. Ho, 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 we're on a fish. This, he feels pretty weighty too. Fortunately, I'm using my king cat rod for striper fishing. I don't know guys, this might be a catfish right here. The way he's rolling around, it just feels like it could be a catfish. The catfish will come up and they will suspend. They will suspend in 40, 50 feet of water, even when it's, you know, 100, well, we're in 140 feet right now. And you wouldn't typically think about catching a catfish suspended. I'm also trying to make sure we keep an eye on the other rod, but they'll do it. No, it's a striper. No, it's a big striper. Oh, guys. Oh, no, 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 no. It's a big striper. It's a big striper. Oh, come on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No, this is a striper. Oh, big piggy. Big piggy. Come here. Come here. Yes. Big pig striper. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh, this might be a new personal best right here. Let me get the light on it. Oh my gosh. This is what you come to these deeper waters for right here to get the bigger fish like this. This is why I was waiting to chum. Right in the chum area too, right out here. This is exactly where I was chumming. Whoa, oh, look at this. Look at that. Oh my goodness, holy cow. Guys, I honestly, I thought it was a catfish. I thought it was a catfish. That is a beast. That is a beast. Oh my word, holy cow. That's just a big fish. I'm almost positive this is a new personal bass right here almost positive let's let's measure it up first holy cow yeah that's it's uh it is uh 25 inches long definitely the longest one i've ever caught i think the previous one was like 23 and a half let's go ahead oh no is this not working <gasps> oh no my battery must be out seriously Oh, it takes little triple A's. Oh, man, guys. Okay, so we're going to have to wait to weigh it up. Oh, man, that's a bummer. Okay, we're going to have to wait to weigh it up, but I could just about guarantee you that's a personal best right there. Let's get her on the stringer. There we go. So here's the comparison for you guys. Here's the fish we caught at the dam, and then here's the fish that we just pulled out. I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at that. I mean, not even... Not even a comparison. Holy cow. <laughs> Baby and, and mama right there. Good grief. Yes. And that's not even considered like a real big one either. Like that's still pretty small for this lake. All right, let's get back over there. Let's keep chumming. Let's get maybe about four more out here. Cut them up, spread them around. Get those fish all excited. I'll bet it takes a few minutes for this to sink down to about that 40 foot mark where we're, it seems like we're getting them. More little niblets for everybody. All right, brief break from our regularly scheduled programming to give a big shout out to today's sponsor of the video, Exter Wallets. It's very sleek, very small design. I love that. I do not like big bulky wallets. I know most of you don't like that type of thing as well. This one holds six cards and look at this. In order to access those cards, there's no trying to reach in and grab them. They have created a button right on the side that watch. You click it, boom, 
Look at that, all your cards pop out, easy peasy. That's how you access everything. It also comes with this band right here to throw a little cash or another couple of cards. Or if you carry more than six cards, they also have this extra plate that you just slide right under the band there, fits right in, boom, adds up to six more cards to the wallet already. So now you can hold up to 12. The other thing I like about this wallet too is the wide variety of colors that it comes in. They weren't making this wallet just thinking about guys. They were thinking about ladies too. I know a lot of girls out there that they don't like big bulky purses. They want something small, something compact that they can carry on them. And this allows them to do that in some really pretty colors, including like rose gold, silver. This is a beautiful, very elegant redwood color. So even for you ladies out there, if you're looking for a small compact wallet, you can find a color that will probably match your style. So that is their aluminum wallet. They also have though, this beautiful leather wallet. Oh, I love the smell of leather. This wallet has several cool features as well, including one that I really like. First off, it's got your six card holder. It's got a couple extra slots in there. The band that you need for any extra storage. Also the button on the bottom, check it out pop up all your cards, pop them back down, compare it to the aluminum. Look, both very small, very sleek, very slender. One other thing that this guy has though, check it out right here. Small little chip card right here, slides very comfortably right into the back of the wallet. Let me show you the function of this. All right guys, we're heading out. We've got everything loaded up, or so we think. All right, we're heading out of the neighborhood. Ready to go on our next adventure. Whoa, hold up. I just got a notification on my phone. Pull off here, take a look. Check that out, look. Exter messages me saying, hey, did you leave your wallet behind? That is what that little card does. It makes sure that you don't leave the house or leave it at a restaurant or leave it at a shop somewhere. Nothing would be worse than driving an hour to a fishing spot or two or three hours to a fishing spot and then finding out, oh, hey, I don't even have my wallet with all my money and my ID and my fishing license and everything on it. Then your day is ruined, your trip's ruined, extra wallet, make sure that something like that doesn't happen. Okay, check this out as well. Raise your hand if you've lost your wallet in your own house. I know I have. Well, again, get on the app. I just have to go to, oh look, ring to find wallet. Just click on that button right there. Oh, I hear music, I hear music. Aha, aha, there it is. Our little chip singing away at us. Okay, this also works on the reversal as well. So if you have your wallet, but you can't find your phone, well, once again, that little card, there's a little button right there in the middle. Just tap it twice, goes off. Wait a second, I hear it, I hear it. Where is it? Somewhere in here, wait. There it is. There you go. So click on the link in the description below to get an additional 5% off your purchase and start enjoying a premium extra wallet today. Oh yeah, I have. Check this out, guys. In my hold, behold, A&W root beer. Hey, A&W, just saying if you're looking for someone to sponsor. Ah. Ah. Oh, there's a bike. Got him. Ho oh, ho! Right when we whoa, chummed. Right when we, so we just chummed, opened up a root beer, and whammo! Feels like another solid fish, solid fish. Doesn't feel quite as big as the last one, but it's not gonna be a small one. Oh yeah, this is another nice one. This will be a good one to go on the stringer. Come here, baby. Not a bad fish at all, look at that, yes. Yes, another one. That chumming, guys, it's working. It is straight working, look at that. I'll bet that's about an 18 incher right now. 17, 18 incher. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, hold up, hold up. Let me get situated here. Got plenty of pep and vinegar. There you go, guys. That is not a bad fish at all. Like I said, I'll bet that's, yeah, I'll bet that's about a good 17 inches long. 16, between 16 and 17 inches long. Probably a good two and a half pounds would be my guess. That is a good stringer fish right there. Yes. Hopping through the bottom lip here. 
just like so. There you go, guys. That is a good, good, a goodly looking stringer. I can deal with that. <sighs> All right, let's get back over under that light. Throw some more chum out. The chum bucket is on, ladies and gentlemen. Did I get him? Did I get him? Yes, we got him. <laughs> yeah. Fish number four. Not the piggy, biggest piggy in the world, but it ain't small. It ain't small neither. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. That's like another two and a half pounder right there. Still feisty. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Check out them peaches right there. Just another pretty fish. There we go. All right, still aggressive. That is another nice fish to add to the stringer right there, ladies and gentlemen. Get some good fillets off of that. Yeah, look at this. Man, the stringer's looking good. One more, one more, then we gotta call it a night. Oh yeah, that's a lot of good looking striper right there. And you got the baby one we caught at the beginning. <laughs> that's awesome. All right, let's send out the mother of all chum for the last one. Let's get a behemoth up here. Guys, really hoping we can end. What, am I getting a bite on? Oh yeah, oh look at that, look at that. We got one here. I was gonna say, I really hope we can end on a nice fish. And that's not terrible, that doesn't feel like it's too bad. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't feel too shabby at all. Not shabby at all. Bring her up out of the depths. I've been just chumming like crazy because it's kind of the last part of the night and uh, trying to get the last fish here. It's taken me much longer actually than I had anticipated. Oh, I think he's caught up in this line. Yeah, he is. He's caught up in the other line. It's taken me a little longer than I had anticipated to get the fish, um, but uh, that's okay. There we go, got him. Look at that. There's a good one. I'll bet that's about three pounds right there. Not a bad way to end the night. There you go, striper number five. Nighttime striper fishing, chumming them up. We have just filled the stringer. That is awesome. That was a lot of fun. All right guys, safe and sound off the water. Look at those though. I love this little guy right down here. Just the dink of the day. Got the day going though. I have got my cooler with some ice. I'm gonna put some layers down and then we're just gonna start. I'm actually gonna start with the big one. Start, look at that, he doesn't even fit in there. I, I'm gonna have to go buy a bigger cooler because of the bigger fish I'm catching down here down south. I mean, that's, that's crazy. Anyway, we'll figure out how to get them all in there. So it is like 3.30 in the morning. In fact, I swear I hear like morning birds starting to come out and chirp. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is get back to the house, catch as much sleep as I can, and then I think we're gonna throw down a big feast. I guess I would say tomorrow, but today, later today, uh, on the grill uh, and reward ourselves for our hard work tonight. So anyway, I'm gonna go get some sleep. I'll catch you guys later in the morning, I guess. Oh, welcome back, guys, to later in the day. Oh, hey, dude. My son. Wandering. Oh look, and another penis. Are you Cinderella today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay, so my little scale, I think, got some water in it because I'm getting an error code on it. So I'm gonna have to use the bathroom scale. Alright, we're gonna hop on the scale here. 195.7. Now we're gonna hold on to our fish. Get on the scale. 202.1! Look at that! So if I'm not mistaken, that's six point four pounds. So a new Personal best for me. That is pretty sweet. Not a bad fish at all. Of course, kind of lost some of his luster sitting in the ice overnight, but he's still gonna taste good. Go ahead and throw him right here on the cutting board. Let's get clean. All right, now there is a nice big old filet right there. What we're gonna do is turn it over, 
Get rid of this bloodline here. There you go. Just get rid of that bloodline. Set them off to the side. There we go. That looks a lot better than what it used to. Some people like to leave the bloodline in. They like the fishy flavor of it. Uh, lot, some people like to take it out. So it's really just to taste, I guess. But that's a good looking piece of fish right there. That's going to taste good. That's going to go good in some tacos. All right, guys. I think I've discovered something in the guts of this one. I thought I felt something kind of weird in here. Oh, look at that, guys. Check it out. That's some of the chum that I was throwing down there. Oh, that's totally one of the pieces of herring that I cut up. <laughs> look at that. He ate that chum up. Oh, that is so cool. Oh, wait, 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 here's another piece, here's another piece. Look at that, look at that. Another piece of chum. He was down there eating up chum. <laughs> that is so cool. Two pieces of chum that I was throwing out. He ate up before he came and devoured my bait. That, that, that is so cool. That was awesome. What's in the guts, Papa? Oh, boo, Bella, you see that right there? There's something in there, should we find out? Oh, he's got a lot of something in his guts. This is fish number four. For whatever reason, Bella loves this part. Here we go. Whoa, look at that, more chum. Oh my goodness, look, he was devouring it. Look, a little piece, there's the head. Oh my goodness, this is all just herring. There's another head. So there are two tails right there. Here's a head part right there. There's a, there's a couple of body parts. There's another head part right there. Look at that, he ate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven pieces of chum in that one's guts. Boy, he was feeding like crazy. That is crazy. Oh, that's so cool. That chumming was working. There we go, last fish. But we also have something in these guts, Bella. Whoa, look at this, Bella. Look, there's a whole half a minnow in there. Look at that. There's all kinds of stuff in this one. Oh, look at that. Oh no, there's a whole one. There's like a whole one right there. You know what? Look at this, guys. Check this out. That looks like... that. The, the, I've got the tail piece, and I've got the head part. This looks like what I would have cut up, and potentially lost. In fact, at a couple of times in the evening last night, I lost my bait. So I might have gotten stole off, but then caught him again. But there you go. Head part, and then the tail part of the herring in his guts. That's cool. That's cool. All right, all our fish are cleaned in a cooler, which we'll set right there. Check it out. Welcome to my brand new deck, actually. I just, we just had this put in. I didn't put it in. I had somebody put it in. I'm not quite that handy. Got a little uh, station here to be able to prep all our food on for our tacos. Now this though, this is my pride and joy. Check it out. Look at that beast. This is the Pit Boss. Pro Series, uh, I smoke in this side, grill in this side, got a got a stove top on that side. It is pretty foxy. I even have like Wi-Fi capabilities with this and everything. Have not used that yet, but we have definitely smoked up some ribs already. I've cooked up some hot dogs and such. I broke down, spent a little extra buck sheesh, got the nicer one but I'm hoping to be able to use it all year long and we could just be throwing down all kinds of food on this. So let's start today anyway. Yeah, we go. got our fillets on some ice here. Pick out a few choice cuts. Sometimes when I'm cutting the bloodlines out, I'll just go ahead and like cut the fillets in two. So then you almost have like a backstrap piece, much like this right here. Let's see here. I think I'm gonna go, oh, here we go. I have recently discovered Team Weber Mediterranean Herb or herb, depending on how much schooling you ever had. <laughs> Seasoning, that stuff is delicious. And then I think what I have Cajun. You know, I always do Cajun. We're gonna just go with straight Zatarans blackened seasoning. So we're gonna do a couple different type of tacos today. Before we start the fish, I'm gonna throw down a little rice aroni cilantro and lime rice here. I had this a few videos back with some striper, and it's absolutely divine. This should go great on the side with our tacos. There we go. Go ahead and mix that all together, and bring it to a boil. Okay, we're gonna start our fillets off by painting them canola oil. Just paint all the fillets. That way when we go to the grill, nothing will stick, just like so. Just a happy little painting. 
That Mediterranean Sea is just really good. It really is. That's that's good stuff right there. Here we go. Put it on a low heat. Our rice. Look at that. Our rice is already boiling. Look at that. I believe the next step is to put a lid on it. All right. Grill sufficiently heated. Oh yeah. I've splashed a little canola oil on our cutting board so I can just dip our paintbrush basically <laughs> our oil paintbrush in it run it along the back side of the fish that we miss and of course we'll season the other side as well heading back to the grill oh yeah that is what I'm talking about right there I'm gonna go ahead and throw a few tortillas on there as well those warm up all right oh yeah those are done we put this these are all looking good oh yeah oh it smells so good too check that out there's our blackened fish right there oh, Mediterranean looking good everything looks like it's cooked to perfection oh look at that big old plate a fresh grilled striper it's time to make some grilled striper tacos ladies and gentlemen first one get some mediterranean fish just put it all in just like that nice healthy portion then we'll do our spicy next now we're taking some cabbage mix putting it on top i'm also going to top it with a little bit of that fresh onion and then I have just some mild, actually this is called wild and mild salsa because I'm kind of a pansy when it comes to spicy foods. I can't get big spicy, so I can do like medium, but uh, obviously do what you want with the salsa. Some, some people like the fire. Oh, it smells like it was worth the wait. I should note that we did throw a little bit of rice on there as well. But let's say a quick prayer. Thank the Lord for keeping us in safety on the water overnight. Now I did the flour tortillas. Some people like corn. Personally, I'm a flour fan. Look at that right there. Oh. Mm. Oh, good heavens. Look at that fish. Just absolutely cooked perfectly. Mm. That's so good, guys. That's so good. I just had a thought, guys. Hold up, one second. Come with me to the garden. I just totally forgot. I've got fresh cilantro. Mm, parsley, parsley, cilantro. This one's parsley, cilantro. It doesn't get better than this right here. Some fresh cilantro for our fish taco. Yeah, I can't believe I almost forgot about that. I would have used like fresh tomatoes and stuff, but my tomatoes aren't ready yet. And my peppers aren't quite ready yet, but we do have some Mmm, some fresh herbs here. Here we go. Got it rinsed off. Now we're cooking. That looks gorgeous. That's exactly what that taco needed. Taco number two with the blackened seasoning. Mmm. Oh wow. That cilantro. Fresh. That goes incredibly well with that salsa. Mmm. Just adds like another flavor dimension to our taco. Oh man, are you kidding me? You gotta tell me your mouth isn't watering. Okay, maybe some of you who don't like fish. That, ladies and gentlemen, that right there, that was worth the wait. That was worth being out until three o'clock in the morning. Mmm. Fresh fish tacos. It just about doesn't get any more summer than that. Guys, I realized I forgot to put lime juice on both of my last tacos. So really the tacos have gotten better and better as I've added cilantro, then lime juice. Go make yourself some striper tacos this summer. You won't be sorry. <laughs> well, YouTube fam, that is it for me for today and last night and then the next day. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next one.